Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. A little pick me up in the afternoon. I uh, just got done eating lunch with the boys, delicious. And then, uh, yeah, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling the 26.2 miles. I uh, got a little bit of an early wake up call from uh, Henry this morning. So we need a little espresso, a little pick me up in the afternoon. And yes, uh, cheers, everyone. More cowbell in the studio. It appears, uh, congrats to all the racers. It appears the results I just got tagged just like five minutes ago on Twitter. Somebody uh, linked the 10K results to me. So they might be uh, ready. If they are ready and done, I will link them down below from 5K, 10K, half, and full marathon down in the description. If they're done, I thought it was going to take a couple days, but who knows? If they're done, I'll link them down below. All the results. Congrats again. Shout out to Wolf Creek race management for compiling all of the results big task big task all right everyone you might notice shelf is empty shelf is empty no run today all right i'll explain more about run walk and the process of recovery that i go through but uh, the shelf is empty until next week when i pick up the running again but no run today uh now let's dive in real quick so Here's the deal, and we're going to talk about the uh, what I mean by the title of the, of the vlog, the trifecta, here in a second, but um, the recovery process. So after big races especially, when I lay it all out there, and that was yesterday in the marathon, even though I did not run the time that I wanted, it still was my peak race for the end of the early 2020 training block. So every, every calendar year, you can build your um build your running calendar around training blocks so some people do three peak races a year some people do four peak races a year um, a lot of the elite marathon runners will only do two peak races so a, a, a spring marathon and then a fall marathon uh, in addition to let's say a tune-up half marathon leading into both of those races so um yesterday was the big one now seven months ago crazy was the pike's peak Ascent, Pikes Peak Ascent, August 2019. And that was the last time that I made a vlog all about my personal recovery process after a peak race. I talk about uh, nutrition. I talk about Epsom salt baths. I talk about ice baths. I talk about supplements, foam rolling, stretching, all the little um, uh, calf, uh, compression sleeves, all of these different points. So rather than repeat myself verbatim here in the studio today, upper right hand corner, you can go check it out if you want to dive much, much deeper into my recovery process. Part of my recovery process that I am a big fan of active recovery. So the day after a peak race, rather than sitting around on your couch completely, I prefer to walk or even jog. So after the Amsterdam Marathon last October, I actually woke up the next morning uh, partially because I was racing, and you don't go do this, but I was racing two weeks later in New York City. So I woke up in Amsterdam, it was raining out, and I went and actually jogged. I think I did about two miles through the streets and canals of Amsterdam. It was amazing because I had the city to myself. But the reason I did that is because that day I was hopping on an airplane to come back to the States and I knew in that airplane process, and I guess I, I foam rolled, a lot of people were shocked, but yes, I wasn't afraid to foam roll on the floors of the airport. I don't know if I would do that now though with the coronavirus floating around, but uh, I foam rolled and I, I jogged that morning in order to keep my legs moving so that the soreness, the DOMS, the delayed onset muscle soreness would not set in quite as intensely. And sure enough, I ended up having a pretty good race in New York City two weeks later. But today, I'm not going to jog. I've opted to 
walk. So walk around the neighborhood. If I have time, I'm going to walk all the way down to the post office later today, check the, check the mail for any final checks coming in for the COVID-19 relief fund. So that is uh, just a point I wanted to make that I like to keep moving the next day after a peak race so that I'm not crazy sore um, two days later when the delayed onset muscle soreness sets in. I opted for some yard work for my active rest day rather than walking to the post office. So, oh man, like when you're training at a high level, yard work, so yeah, it takes, it's a, it takes a back seat sometimes. I'll just put it that way. All right, here we go, clean it up. Din din time, din din time, here we go. Oh yeah, another eight second. Okay. I did it. Taco night. Oh yeah, here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, by the way, taco night, absolutely epic. Okay, so something crazy went down this weekend. I do believe we had an Olympian compete in the inaugural DGR virtual races. We'll get to that in one second, but first of all, uh, the trifecta, here we go. So you know, uh, my goal for arriving at the starting line is to arrive as fit as possible, as fresh as possible, and as healthy as possible. So in the past, in past training blocks for peak races, I have definitely challenged arriving as fit as possible, meaning I maybe didn't put in as much work as I should have. And I've definitely arrived at starting lines where I was not as healthy as I should be, okay? But as far as I can remember, I cannot recall arriving at a starting line where I was not as fresh as possible. So like yesterday before my marathon, I was raring to go, I was excited. But the 50 miler 10 days ago, 11 days ago now, that was like, I'm actually incredibly grateful because uh, for the 50 miler because it, it, it basically affirms my thesis that, yeah, you need to taper. Yeah, you need to rest up and make sure your legs are as fresh as possible before a peak race. So anyway, I was just reflecting over the past like 24 hours, um, like why would my legs not move yesterday? Obviously, it's like, I, the really, it's, it, it comes down to the 50 miler. Like my legs were just, they were done. They were done. And so it affirms that third point about as fresh as possible. Okay, just wanted to put that out there. It feels good to affirm the trifecta. Are you ready for race results? Ladies side first, here we go. 5K, absolutely epic. First place, shout out to Sarah Kasabian Larson uh, from Alma, Michigan, 1724. Congrats, Sarah, absolutely blazing. 536 pace, okay. Mo Palmer in second in 1903. Ashlyn Gruber in third in 1915. Oh yeah, I should also mention, obviously, we're all running on different courses, different elevations. Um, so anyway, obvi but it's still fun nonetheless to hear these results. So congrats, everyone. Okay, moving on to the 10K. Here we go from Christchurch, New Zealand, the Olympian Angie Petty, 37.54, 606 pace. First place, Angie Petty. Congratulations, that is epic. So, okay, I just did a really quick search I, I believe I will I will confirm right now. I think she's an Olympian from 2016. Amazing Angie, thank you for participating. Okay, moving on to second, Megan Bobnar from Kentucky in 43 minutes and 12 seconds. Congrats and Lubika Ford from Great Britain. I believe from Wales perhaps in Great Britain 4450. 4450. Awesome Lubika. I hope, I'm sorry if I'm not saying your name right, in the 10K third place. Here we go, on to the half marathon, Rachel Sanchez or Rochelle Sanchez from Texas in 132.30 in first place, blaze it. Oh, 132.30, Caroline pa uh, Pomerleau, uh, again, sorry on the name, Quebec, Canada, 136.32 in second place and rounding out the top three, Sarah Whitaker from Great Britain in 137. 
1506. Awesome. Got blaze it. Just absolutely flying. Absolutely flying. Okay, that was the half marathon on the lady side. Last but not least, the marathon first place on the women's side, Kimberly Lord from uh, Vermont, South Hero, Vermont in 308 12. 308 12, 711 pace. Awesome work. I'll, I'll just, well, yeah, I hope she doesn't mind me saying her age. 40 years old. Oh, awesome, Kimberly. Crushing, crushing the competition. Okay, Amanda Nelson from Woodstock, Ontario, Canada in 311.09 in second place. And Shelby Adair uh, from Newton, North Carolina, USA in 312.54 third place. Shelby Adair. Awesome, ladies. Congratulations. Epic, epic, epic. And uh, oh, so cool. Okay, moving on to the men's side. So maybe a little and my camera battery died but we're back okay <laughs> what i was about to say moving on to the men's side 5k all right here's the deal i cannot like so this was a free event right um you know it, it's the honor system with submitting results you know verifying through you know a screenshot of strava or what have you and like nobody has enough time to verify by the way there was there was over 3,000, I think there was like 3,033 runners. So we're talking a lot of people and verifying those results, that takes a lot of time. So um, this first place on the men's side in the 5K, I don't know, they, like I couldn't find it anywhere. But anyway, John, I apologize. Like I don't know, John, if, John, if you're watching, if you want to uh, uh, confirm it with me, uh, it says 1309. I don't know though from Livermore, California, John Bennett, congrats if it's true, but eh, 1309, like that's, I think we're breaking records there. Like American, what is the American road 5k record? Anyway, John, uh, congrats if it is true, but again, I, we can't verify every single result right now. Okay. Second place, Adam Holland from, uh, Great Britain in 1411, also blazing in 434 pace. Congrats, Adam Holland. And third place, Rob Albano from New Jersey in 1510, uh, 453 pace. Congrats, Rob. And I will just put Mark Bennett into, now this is interesting. This is interesting. Mark Bennett is also from Livermore, California. Same as the first place gentleman in 1540. So maybe the Bennett's could give me a, a little jingle uh, through an email and let me know, like, how are you pulling off a 1309? Anyway, we're moving on to the 10K. Here we go, men's side, Michael Chapman from Australia. First place, congratulations, Michael. 3151. First place, awesome, from down under. Freddie Garcia in second from Kenosha, Wisconsin, in 3313. Boom, flying, Freddie, flying. Oh, I'll just say, 41 years old. Congrats, Freddie. Oh, it gives us all hope, right? Gives us all hope. Okay, Rasmus Jensen, I believe from Denmark in 33.54 for third place. Congrats, Rasmus Jensen from Denmark. Again, apologies on the name. Okay, moving on to the half marathon. We got Adam Holland in 103.37 from Great Britain. Adam Holland, 103.37. I mean, we're talking uh, getting up there into the very much so elite level. So congrats, Adam. That is anything under 104 is very, very respectable. So, oh man, Great Britain, awesome. So second place, uh, Kundan Singh from, I believe, India. Um, I believe so in 108.34, 514 pace. Awesome, epic, epic, epic. Great time, 108.34. Oh, so cool. And Nathan O'Connor from Indiana, Porter, Indiana in 113. 01, 19 years old too. Congrats, Nathan. Okay, moving on. Last but not least to the marathon on the men's side. I'm so glad I got smoked. I got smoked and I wasn't even in the top 20, I don't think. So here we go. First place, Eric Hill from Denmark in two hours and 15 minutes and 54 seconds, 511 pace, 31 years old. Eric Hill, um, I believe from Denmark. I do believe apps of Denmark is throwing down DE is the is the country so I think that's Denmark anyway awesome work Eric moving on to second place Mark Summers from Logan Utah in 227 28 uh, in 538 pace age 23 congrats Mark awesome and last but not least Nick Collins from Ashford Great Britain 238 flat in 602 pace to round out the results unbelievable 
Okay, I was getting messages all day, all over the place saying, Seth, I've done virtual races in the past, and these are some of the more, like, the, like very competitive, competitive racing happening. Um, so, like, somebody emailed me and said, usually I finish at least in the top 20% of all finishers, and this guy said, like, I wasn't even in the top half. So, congrats, we got some fast folks out there, and listen, if I didn't, like, listen, I know top three is kind of how you do it in race results, whatever your race result was, Congrats for just getting out the door and getting it done in these Uh crazy times of the coronavirus, right? You could have sat on the couch, ate your Cheetos, and just hung out and not gotten out the door and, you know, just tossed it out the window, but you got it done. So no matter whatever time you ran, congratulations, and whatever distance, okay? I really mean that. So unbelievable. Okay, question of the day. Question of the day is... um, What did you think about this entire virtual race weekend? And more importantly, if we were to do it again, how could we make it even better? All right, so that's the question of the day. All the creative uh, juices flowing, get your ideas flowing. Let us know down in the comments, like what could we do to make this even like really epic, okay? That's the question of the day. Thank you so much. Thank you for being here. Onward and upward, and the bread is buttered. The bread is buttered. All right, everyone, we're going to toss it back to yesterday's vlog. A little highlight reel from uh, folks who uh, sent in clips and also a couple clips from my marathon. All right, it'll be right there. Be right there. Onward and upward. All right, see beauty, work hard, and love each other. See you tomorrow.